Hello everybody. We start our first Pune online lecture. I hope not so many lectures will will be given in completely online form, but who knows? Nobody can say now what will happen. Okay. <clears throat> I'll start with two remarks. So, the first remark is remark one. All properties of Jordan and Lebeg measures are valid not only for the case of subset of the cube ki. Recall that we start with subsets of a fixed cube, but but also for The general case with few exceptions. So the exception is for the property of continuity of the Lebesgue measure. <coughs> the continuity holds for bounded sets only. And let me give an example, counter example which shows that continuity property need not to be extended for the general case. So, example, <coughs> consider R1, so we are on the line, <coughs> and put AM equals to, let's say, M plus infinity. So, infinite interval. Lebesgue measure of AM is plus infinity for every M natural. But the intersection of all sets AM so what happens if we want to find the intersection? M goes to infinity, then the intervals, the left end of the interval moves to the right and uh, 
at the end, of course, it's a little bit strange to say about, to talk about the end at infinity, but nevertheless, the intersection of this infinite sequence of intervals is obviously empty. And of course, Lebesgue measure of the empty set is zero. And you see, for arbitrary m we have measure equals to infinity, but it is not equal to the limit. So, uh, continuity means that measure of the intersection equals to the limit. Because we have this property. We have a sequence of embedded sets. Nevertheless, as you see, continuity pro property is not valid. <coughs> so for bounded sets it's impossible because um, we can consider for bounded sets just uh, we represent, so for example, for R2, we represent the whole R2 as union of such squares. Of course, it's infinite, but if we are talking only about bounded sets, then we have finitely many squares which cover our set and we can consider just <coughs> union, finite union of portions of our set inside each of squares. So we have a set and we have several portions inside each of squares and we can apply for each portion all properties which were given before and then take the sum in that sum. Okay, and for the union no problem because we have, if we have infinity then it means we have infinite sum of non-negative terms and it means uh, we have infinity everywhere so that is not a problem, but when we consider intersection, it might be a problem. <coughs> okay, <coughs> remark two. <coughs> For bounded sets A, we have <coughs> outer Jordan measure of A equals to infimum of volumes of M for M containing A elementary elementary and in the Jordan measure, oh, sorry, in the Jordan measure equals to supremum of all of volumes of all elementary sets which are inside our set A. Why this is true? Because you see, recall definitions, or definitions, recall definitions. So we have outer measure of A equals to infimum of sums of MIs covers A, and of course, finite union of elementary set is again elementary. So, in fact, 
For Jordan said, we need not to consider such sums. We could use that one. Why I used this form? Because it, it looks quite similar to the Lebesgue. So you can, for the Lebesgue, you put here infinity, that's all. That's the only difference between Lebesgue measure and Jordan measure. And what is about in the Jordan measure? So, if A is a subset of Ki, right? Then the inner measure was defined as 1 minus outer measure, Jordan measure of the complement, where A prime is Ki minus A. And of course, <coughs> if we know that outer measure is infimum for all elementary sets which cover the complement, then look, so we have our cube Ki. Somewhere we have our set, let's, let's say this is A, right? Then complement everything else is A prime. And if elementary set contains A prime, so what it means? Elementary set contains A prime. So uh, this is an elementary set that is the boundary of this elementary set. This elementary set contains A prime. And if it contains A prime, then the complement of this elementary set is an elementary set which is inside A. What is written here? That is how to check that property of the Jordan measure. And let me remark also that, so, as we know, Lebesgue outer measure is infimum of infinite sum. So for infinite coverings of our set. And I saw somewhere in internet even some discussion where it was written something like that. That in the Lebesgue measure is supremum for all <coughs> unions of elementary sets which are included in A of these sums. That is not true. Not true. Please be careful. That is not true. That is why I used this definition, not, not that one, for the Jordan measure, just to make it uh, to emphasize the difference, uh, not to emphasize the difference, to, no, no, to, to make uh, the analogy between Jordan and Lebesgue measures to better visible. Yeah? So you see, if we write like that, then what is the difference between Jordan and Lebesgue? Only here, right? And for uh, in Jordan and Lebesgue, the definition was completely the same. Completely the same. Okay, that is a little bit about general definitions. Now, we'll consider in more details structure of open sets. So, theorem 7 of our section, structure 
of open sets in Rn. Every open set may be bounded. I don't and no, no. Just open set. In Rn may be represented as a countable disjoint union of intervals in Rn, of course, in Rn. Proof. I'll start with <coughs> separation of Rn into the intervals, and let us do it slightly differently than I did it before, just like so as a disjoint union for integer vectors. And here <coughs> product j from 1 up to n, l i, l i plus 1, like that. So what is it? What is it? That is, looks like for r2, for r2, right? So what do we have for r2? I have integers. On, right, and also in y axis, same picture minus one, and so on. And what we do, for example, here I include zero and I do not include one, that is product zero one times zero one, zero one times 0, 1. So that is a square which includes the left side and bottom side and doesn't include top side and right side. Uh, and we consider union of such. So for example, yeah, that one, that one, and so on, right? And that is disjoint union, because we do not include part of the boundary. So that is disjoint union of squares, in general of what we call mm, intervals j1 or i1 here j ah okay it doesn't matter let it be j thanks thanks yeah thank you okay <coughs> okay oops <coughs> so then what we do? Then I can split every side into two equal parts. So like that. Right? We split every side into two equal parts. So what I'll obtain for arbitrary 
am it will be okay like lj over 2 to the power m l oops lj plus 1 should be here of course i'm sorry lj plus 1 lj plus 1 over 2 to the power m yeah like that and let me denote this as l in z n t l m that is notation so for example here look uh, one small square that is p <coughs> okay what is it mm. vector in x we have one two right so that is one zero one this small square so that is product of what we have here one half one times zero one half that's it of the first level so we divide by two and we continue for every m this construction right <coughs> so it means we represent the whole space as a disjoint union of intervals these are n-dimensional intervals intervals in rn intervals in rn now now i want to represent an arbitrary open set so let g be an open set in rn then put m naught by definition is disjoint union of p l zero such that here we consider only those multi indices l such that p l zero is a subset of our set g and by induction we can continue so m s will be by the definition <coughs> the union of all p l y s let it be m let it be m here so s okay let it be s let it be s of p l s right and here we'll consider again all L such that P L S is a subset of G, but we delete the union of all J from zero up to S minus one of all M J's for smaller indices. J's. So, what is 
this construction. So look, let me draw here somewhere we have our open set G, right? And then what happens? For example, here, yeah, that is, yeah, this is M0, M0. So we have two intervals, two squares, two squares of the level zero, the level zero, which are completely inside our set G. And then we continue this construction. So let's say what will be M1. M1 will, we add part which are formed, for example, this is a part which will be included into M1 because it is not in M0 and simultaneously those squares of level 1, level 1, like that one, right? They are inside our set G. Okay? That is how we construct sets MS. So every set MS is a countable, at most countable union, at most countable union of disjoint intervals. And all together, so the claim is, claim is that in fact we have G equals to the union of S from 0 up to infinity of MS and every MS is at most countable union of intervals so together we have a countable disjoint union of intervals if this is true if this is true okay so theorem will be proved once we'll prove that inclusion that equality right okay by the construction for arbitrary m natural <coughs> we have uh, j contains the union of the first m sets ms why because you see every time we consider only intervals which are inside our g this is true for arbitrary m hence g contains the union of all ms okay so now we need to prove opposite inclusion the opposite inclusion so we'll finish if we'll be able to prove the following inclusion that is in fact equivalent to our claim to our claim right okay <clears throat> how to prove it consider arbitrary point so take arbitrary point x naught in g x naught in g that is a point of rn so i should put here vector also uh, that is an element of rn right okay G is open. G is open. Hence, there exists positive epsilon naught such that the ball with center at x naught is in G. <coughs> Let me draw a picture. So you see, 
we have a point x naught and we know there is a ball there is a ball of radius epsilon naught which is completely inside our set g like that yeah the set g is like that okay then Uh, what we can find, look, um, the sequence 1 over 2 to the power m tends to 0. Hence, we can find the exists m natural such that square root of n times 2 to the power minus m is less than epsilon naught. Why? Because this sequence, this sequence, as m goes to infinity, tends to zero. So it will be as small as we want. Then what we do? So, mm, we choose a level of, let's say, of intervals. So m will be taken here as well. Then, Look, there exists a multi-index such that x naught belongs to P L M. Why? Because every time the whole space R n is the union of those intervals. So it doesn't matter. How small is the side of our squares on the picture? The union of all such squares covers the whole plane. And in general, the union of intervals covers the whole space. Now, x naught belongs to PLM. And for the picture, what it means? Look. If x0 is a point of our interval, and the interval is product j from 1 up to n of L, Lj over 2 to the power m, Lj plus 1 over 2 to the power m, right? That is our interval. And then what? What it means that x0 belongs to this interval? The worst case, uh, how to say, uh, arbitrary point of our interval, arbitrary point of our interval, is for sure on the distance less than epsilon naught of x0. Why? Because, look, for example, what is the worst situation for R2? If x0 is one of the angles, like that. So we have, that is our interval, which is square for our case. So, <coughs> the farthest, farthest point the largest distance is the opposite vertex. And this distance is equal to precisely square root of n times 2 to the power minus m. Because the side is 2 to the power minus m. And we need to apply Pythagore theorem n times to obtain the opposite vertex, the distance to the opposite vertex in our and dimensional interval. So you see, what is written here is precisely the length of the diagonal of this interval and dimensional diagonal. And you see, since that distance is less than epsilon naught, so we can deduce that the whole 
interval is inside our ball. That is the crucial observation. The crucial observation. So you see, x naught belongs to the interval, and that is maximal distance between points of our interval. And this maximal distance is less than epsilon naught. X naught, x naught is a point of our interval, maximal distance is less than epsilon naught, so the whole interval is inside our ball. And our ball lies in G. And what it means? PLM is a subset of G. Hence, hence, the union of the first M set MS is in G, because this union for sure contains our PLM, right? Because all sets, all intervals of the level M are in our G. If uh, oh, sorry, all intervals are in our set MS if they are in G. Yeah. And what it means? It means that uh, yeah, x naught is here. So x naught belongs to this one, right? So you see, yeah, arbitrary point x naught. We took arbitrary point x naught in G, and it turns out that it is included into the union of the first M sets MS. Hence, G is a subset of the full union of MS. And theorem is proved. <coughs> okay. <coughs> now, very important corollaries. <coughs> Corollary one. All Open sets and all closed sets are <coughs> Lebesgue measurable. Lebesgue measurable. That is a very important property. And why that is true? Because you see, every open set is disjoint union of intervals. Every interval is Lebesgue measurable because it has a volume even. And we have countable union, hence it is Lebesgue measurable. Countable union of measurable sets is again measurable. And closed sets are complements of open sets. And uh, let me say a few words about this property. In fact, let me give a definition. Borel algebra is the minimal sigma algebra which contains all open and all closed sets in Rn. Okay, let's have a break. Let's continue. So, 
elements of Borel algebra, elements of Borel algebra, of the Borel algebra, are called Borel set. Let me explain a little bit what is the minimal sigma algebra. So what are examples of Borel sets? For example, there are F sigma sets what they are. These are unions, countable unions of Ai, where Fi are closed. There are G delta sets, intersections, of GI, where GI are open. So in general, there are F sigma sets which are neither open nor closed. And analogously is about G delta. <coughs> For example, look. Uh, 0, 1 is neither closed nor open, but we can represent it either as F sigma, like union i from 1 up to infinity of the intervals 0, 1 minus 1 over i closed intervals, right? Or we can represent 0, 1 as uh, the intersection of open intervals like minus 1 over i, 1. These are open intervals and the intersection of them is our zero one. So this zero one is simultaneously F sigma and G delta. But there are sets which are only in one of those categories. And of course you can continue. For example, you can consider countable intersections of F sigma sets and countable unions of G delta sets and so on again, infinite sequences of those operations. So, you can construct a lot of sets. And in fact, for a long time, there was an open question if all Borel sets, uh, sorry, if all Lebesgue measurable sets are Borel sets or not. And it turned out not that, in fact, there are Lebesgue measurable sets which are not Borel measurable, which are not Borel sets, but the construction is very complicated. The first construction was given by Russian mathematician Suslin in 1918, in fact. <coughs> okay, but <coughs> let me continue <coughs> with those topics. So, Corollary 2. Corollary 2. For every bounded closed set F, we have outer Jordan measure of F equals to Le the Lebesgue measure. And for every open set G, we have 
in them. Jordan measure of G equals to the Lebesgue measure of G. So we know that both closed and open sets are Lebesgue measurable, but for the Jordan we have this relation. So proof. <coughs> Let me start with open set. So, by the first remark, or not, second remark from today, we have that in Jordan measure is supremum for all elementary sets which are inside G of the <coughs> volumes of the volumes. Okay. <coughs> okay, then uh, yeah. So, <coughs> it means we can construct for arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. There exists a An elementary set M, which is in G, and um, the in a measure in a Jordan measure minus epsilon less than volume of M less or equal than this. in the measure, right? That is by the definition. <coughs> ah, it will be more general, I mean. In fact, yeah, in fact, that is a corollary of our theorem, I'm sorry, corollary of our theorem. So, <coughs> I can prove it not by the definition, but by using our result. So, by the theorem, by theorem 7, right, we can represent G as a disjoint union of infinitely many intervals. These are intervals. Intervals. Hence, what we obtain, G contains the union of Pi for all M natural, for all natural M, right? Because G, G coincides with the union of all those intervals. So G contains the union for all M. Hence, <coughs> the, by the definition, by the definition, uh, we have that <coughs> yeah, that is the elementary set, elementary set, elementary set M which is in G, right? Which is in G. Hence, according to the definition, the uh, 
volume is you see in a Jordan measure is supremum of all volumes right of such sets hence uh, this volume volume of this M is less or equal than the inner Jordan measure in the Jordan measure right and that is precisely because of the finite union that is precisely measure of this disjoint union oh, sorry M here. M here yeah so we have that the inner Jordan measure of G greater or equal than this measure for arbitrary M and by continuity continuity of the Lebesgue measure as m tends to infinity this measure tends to the limit so measure of the infinite union and that is precisely mu of g because that is our set and yeah, <coughs> so you see that this in the Jordan measure greater or equal than u of g, hence we obtain that uh, mu of g is less or equal than in the Jordan measure of g, but for arbitrary set A in Rn, we have <coughs> that out uh, I'm sorry in the Jordan measure less or equal than in the Lebesgue measure so those two inequalities if I apply it again to G imply that we have equality here equality here equality here and now to prove the rest for the closed sets Okay, if it is bounded, f is contained in a interval, let's say k interval, f is a subset of k, <coughs> then <coughs> mm, I can take interval, let it be, let it be, yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> let it be open I think I think open is better yeah let it be open open into open into yeah it's better then look then k minus f is open k minus f is open hence as we know measure of k minus f is equal to the in the Jordan measure of k minus f what is in the Jordan measure? Let me recall that is um, supremum for all elementary sets in K minus F of volumes. And if M is a subset of this difference, it's equivalent to say that we have infimum for all let's say m prime which covers f of so look at the picture 
that is our k, right? We have somewhere inside m, no, uh, somewhere we have f, first of all, right? That is f. Then we have m inside this f, that is m here. F, that is F, yeah, that is F, F, above this curve, above this curve is F, M is elementary set inside, <coughs> and then volume of M equals to uh, volume of k minus volume of m prime where m prime is a complement is a complement right and complement to m contains complement to k minus f oh sorry that is k minus f so not f k minus f k minus f k minus f m is inside k minus f so, uh, what is above our curve is k minus f, hence what is below is f. And m prime, m prime is by the definition k minus m. It is again an elementary. Right? No, 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 something wrong, something wrong. Yeah, firstly, I should write here supremum. That is supremum, here it's supremum, still. And of course, supremum is taken over all m prime, which contain f, and that is k minus, and now I put in femum. So supremum of minuses, is equal to infimum of m primes for all m prime which contain f. And that is precisely k minus uh, outer Jordan measure of f. Yeah. Which is equal, of course. Yeah, measure of this k minus f is k minus measure of f for the Lebesgue measure. So we obtain those are also equal. That's it. <coughs> yeah. Okay. <coughs> now, structure of Lebesgue measurable sets. Theorem 8. Theorem 8, structure of Lebesgue measurable sets in Rn. <coughs> okay. Get either, yeah, for finite measures. Let A be a Lebesgue measurable, <coughs> measurable set in Rn with finite measures. Then A can be represented as intersection of unions intersection of unions of AIJs. 
without a not. Where? A I J's are elementary. Elementary sets such that for all I naturals A I one is a subset of a i2 and so on right so i fix it and j increases yeah oh for all b i which are equal to unions of a i j's we have b1 contains b2 and so on measure of b1 is finite and measure of a naught that is not elementary you see only a i j's are elementary but a naught has Lebesgue measure zero that that's it yeah <clears throat> so we can roughly speaking up to a set of measure zero you see uh, if these are elementary then of course those are borel sets and that is measure zero so you see in particular it means that lebesgue measurable sets are different from borel only by sets of measure zero so that's it <coughs> okay proof <coughs> proof <coughs> so by definition by definition as we know if measure of a is finite then what it means this measure can be represented as infimum of sums okay let it be let it be m i's or c i's <laughs> ah no no I I will use not the definition better to use criteria criteria by criteria of measurability criteria criteria of measurability So for arbitrary natural I, there exists a union of I forget. I forget what I should do here. Yeah, union of the IJs. They exist union of the IJs. Not by criteria, by definition, still by definition. Yeah. J from one up to N. These are elementary, elementary. 
which covers our set A and yeah, not by criteria, by definition, by definition, by definition. And measure of the union dij's minus a is less than 1 over i. So mm, let me recall that once again measure is infimum for all unions mi's i from 1 up to infinity which cover a of sums of mi and then by this definition so we can choose as close as we want uh, the union of elementary sets covers A and the difference, which is just difference between volume of that and A, is as small as we want, less than 1 over I. Okay, then put EI equals to this union. So then what we have, measure of ci minus a less than 1 over i for all i's natural. That's important. That's important. Okay. <coughs> then, yeah. Then we take bi, let it be union from, let's say, r from 1 up to i of c union no. be one to be larger than others intersection 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 of CRs yeah yeah <clears throat> then by this construction for sure we have b1 contains b2 and so on we have such <coughs> the relation between b i's also yeah uh, also what we have we have that b1 is equal to c1 and look uh we have measure of c1 minus a is less than 1 and c1 contains a hence measure of b1 is equal to measure of a plus measure of b1 minus a and it is less than mu of a plus 1. So it is indeed finite. This condition is satisfied, right? Okay, so everything about b1s is ready. Now what's about a? a i's? Yeah. <coughs> mm. Look, uh, B i's are uh, 
intersections of those CRs. Let me write them down. So BI is the intersection R from 1 to I of the union from J from 1 up to infinity of DI J's. Yeah. And I can represent it. Uh, not I, R, R here, R, yeah, yeah, and so I can put A, I, J's, let it be, yeah, so Yeah, I can now denote a i j. Let it be union uh, for s from one up to j's. Yeah, of intersections r from one up to i of d r s that's it yeah so these are elementary sets these are elementary sets and you see by the definition we have this inclusion this inclusion we have because every time we take more and more sets of this nature and the union of AIJs, if we take union of all, of all Js, it means we have that one. Yeah, that's it. So the last thing which we need to prove is that one. That one. So what is A0? A0 is, A0 is by definition A minus the union of all B, not the union, just intersection. A minus uh, the intersection. Yeah. A minus the intersection of B i's by the definition that is a naught right and then it follows that measure of a naught equals to uh, a minus limit as i tends to infinity measures of B i's yeah and Measure of bi. Look, what is measure of bi? Bi is a subset of ci. Subset of ci. And also it contains a. Yeah, hence. Hence. I think, yeah, yeah, I should, yeah, I'm sorry, of course, that is, A naught is opposite, yeah, that is intersection of B i's, sorry, minus A, that's it, yeah. <coughs> so, by continuity, we have measure of A naught equals to the limit as i tends to infinity of measures of b i minus a b i minus a measure of b i minus a is yeah and 
less or equal than limit superior as i tends to infinity of measure of c i minus a since b i is in c i that's it right b i is in c i i put limit superior because i don't know if this that sequence converges but every member of that sequence is less or equal right and measure of ci minus a is less than 1 over i hence this limit superior is zero and we are done we are done yeah the theorem is proved yeah that's it and uh, let me give the corollary to that theorem or uh, maybe Okay. I'm not able to formulate it. Okay, maybe then it's better to stop here. Okay, because it's better next time I'll start with repeating the theorem and we'll discuss corollaries and everything around it. Okay. Let's finish for today. Thanks for your attention.